Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Time for the ongoing saga of my bedtime book of two-minute stories. Does this thing ever have an end? Not that I'm not enjoying the trip and everything. <laughs> well, it is a bit of a magical mystery tour. Hint, hint. Look for a card in the corner. <laughs> Edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories are Katie Fieldmouse's Birthday Party. Oh, well, that's a mouthful. By Rosemary Garland. And The Lonely House by Rosemary Bromley. Hmm. The Lonely House sounds like a familiar title. All right. So Katie Fieldmouse's Birthday Party. What are you giving Katie Fieldmouse for her birthday? Asked Floppity Rabbit. I'm not going to tell anyone, said Bertram Beetle. What are you going to give her? He asked Dolly Dormouse. I'm keeping it a big secret, said Dolly Dormouse. What are you going to give her? Dolly Dormouse asked Kathy Caterpillar. I'm keeping it a secret too, said Kathy. What are you giving her, Sally Snail? Sally Snail said, Oh dear, I don't know what to give her. I'm sure all of you will think of something very splendid and original. I'm so slow at thinking. Never mind, said Floppity Rabbit kindly. I'm sure you'll think of something. But the party's at four o'clock, so you had better hurry. You know I can't hurry, said Sally. Yes, we know you are rather slow, said Tommy Titmouse, who darted from branch to branch like Quicksilver. I know, said Sally Snail, who had been thinking hard. I'll give her a little hat. Oh, but you've spoiled it by telling us what you were going to give. You should have kept it a secret, shouted all the friends. Just like Sally Snail to be slow to understand, said Tommy Titmouse. Oh, said Sally Snail, how silly of me. We'll meet at Katie Mouse's house at four o'clock, they all said. At ten minutes to four by the dandelion clock in the woods, there was a little procession of friends winding its way along the hedgerows. The first was Floppity Rabbit. She knocked on the door of Mouse House and Katie's mother let the friends in. Katie Fieldmouse was so excited when she saw all the presents. The first she opened was from Floppity Rabbit. It was a little tea cozy. Thank you, said Katie. How lovely. The next present she opened was from Bertram Beetle. It was another tea cozy. Thank you, Bertie, said Katie. That will be nice when the first one is being washed, she said politely. Next was Dolly Dormouse's present. Do you know what it was? I couldn't guess. Another tea cozy. Thank you, Dolly, said Katie, just a little more quietly. And she thought of something polite to say. That will do when, when I have special visitors. The next present was from Kathy Caterpillar. Can you guess what it was? Oh, God, another <laughs> tea cozy. Yes, another tea cozy. Thank you, said Katie, and a little tear crept into the corner of her eye. That will match my curtains, she said. The next present was from Tommy Titmouse. And that was a tea cozy, too. Thank you, said Katie with a tiny sob in her voice. I can use this on Sundays. At last she came to Sally Snail's present. As Katie started opening it, her little mouth trembled a little. Can you guess what it was? A hat. No, not a tea cozy. Feels like one of those children's shows. <laughs> this is the most we've kind of commented on in one way as we were reading it. Please continue. Katie unwrapped the big leaf, and inside was the dearest little acorn hat she had ever seen. Sally Snail had put a beautiful blue feather in the hat, too. Oh, Sally, said Katie. That is the very nicest present of all. Way to make everybody else feel bad. And she put it on. How silly we all were not to tell each other what we were going to give, said Floppity Rabbit. Sally was the most sensible of us all because she told us what she was going to give. What can I do with all my tea cozies? asked Katie. I know, said Sally Snail, who was usually slower than anyone else to think of a good idea. Let's all wear them instead of paper hats at your tea party. And that's just what they did. And in case you couldn't guess it, a lot of my voice jumping in is commentary not actually part of the story <laughs> when i said another tea cozy that wasn't actually in the book yeah 
the art's very nice. I wonder which one I'm going to use. Because they're all quite nice and they all fit the story, but some are a little bit more difficult to crop than others. Because you have one large rectangle, one small rectangle, and then kind of a J shape. Hmm. I was going to say L, but yeah, because of the direction, the J is much more apt. And once again, it's the color artist. Very nicely done. There's even like texturing, like they used a paintbrush this time instead of like ink. Very nice. So there are some signs of like ink work on it for colors. It's very sharp. Hmm. Very nice. I was also wondering where the tea cozies were. I'm like, did they wear them as hats? <laughs> yes. Yes, they did. Because she got like six tea cozies. Yeah. And was running out of polite things to say. Because getting one tea cozy is okay. Getting the second's okay, but then the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth kind of gets redundant. Just a little bit. And I don't know if maybe this story shows a little bit more of its European origins, because you do not tend to see a lot of tea cozies in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I've heard of tea cozies. I've seen them online in online stores, photos, some shows, but I didn't actually see one in person until a few weeks ago. Wow. It had a fox on it, and it was cute. Mm. Yeah, not quite sure what a tea cozy is used for. I'm guessing it's to keep your tea warm. You put it over the teapot. Oh. That's why it's a tea cozy. Makes it all nice and cozy. Mm-hmm. All right. The Lonely House. This is the story of a little house that was miserable. It was sad because it had no one living in it. Every day it looked out its windows and saw people going in and out of all the other houses in the road, but no one ever came to his door. I didn't know that when old Mr. and Mrs. Jones went away they would never come back, he thought sadly. How happy I would be if children came to live here again. How nice it would be to have them sleeping in my bedrooms and playing with their toys in my living room. I wouldn't mind how much noise they made. One day, some men came and put up a wooden notice in the front garden of the house just by the gate. It said, For sale. Someone is sure to come and buy me soon, said the house, and then I won't be lonely anymore. That night, when the windows of all the other houses were lit up, the little house did not feel at all unhappy. My windows will have lights in them soon, he murmured, and went to sleep. Soon afterwards, a car stopped in the road outside the little house. Out scrambled three children, a dog, and three grown-ups. They are coming to see me! Hooray! chuckled the house. Oh, mother, I'd love to live here, cried one of the children. It looks such a friendly house. I certainly like the look on the outside, said her mother. Come on, let's see what the inside is like. Down the garden path came the three children, their mother and father, and the dog. A key was turned in the lock on the front door, and soon the little house was full of chattering. How the house loved it! He felt so happy that somehow his visitors felt it too. It feels a happy house, I must say, remarked the father. I think we'd be happy here too, said mother. The children opened a door into the back garden and ran out. Mother, Daddy, there's a swing on an old apple tree, cried one of them. It doesn't look as though it's been used for such a long time. The little house grew happier and happier. I'm sure they want to come and live with me, he thought. He didn't even feel miserable after the family had climbed back into their car and driven away. He was sure they would come back and that he was never going to be lonely again. And he never was. Often after that, the children and their mother and father visited him. They measured his windows for curtains. They measured his floors for carpets. They papered his walls, and they painted all his woodwork. Soon he was spick and span all over. Then the great day arrived. The family moved in. A huge van arrived outside the little house's gate, and soon the rooms were full of men carrying furniture and full of noise and laughter, too, as the children grew more and more excited. That night... As all the lights in his windows were put out, one by one, the little house thought, I am the very happiest and luckiest house in the whole village. I love how great day is 
in capitals and slightly bolder than the other letters. Really emphasizes it. Yes, because that was the great day. And we don't actually see the family in any of the art. We see the dog. We see the dog, we see the house, we see the van, and we see the movers. Yeah, but nothing of the family. They kept the family pretty generic, too, so... Because the story was mostly about the house and how happy it was and how sad it was. Oh, and that's the thing that I was going to bring up in the other story. So what was the lesson in the last story, and what's the lesson in this? Do they even have lessons? I don't think they do. At least not this one. Not really, unless you want to go kind of meta and say happiness is serving your purpose. Because a house is meant to be lived in. Ah. And the art is nicely detailed, and we're back to the um, two-color artist again. It's very nice. The house looks good. It almost has an expression on its face. I would say it's more of a sad expression in this particular shot. Though, if the dog's there, the family's there, so I would have drawn the house more happy. Well, we don't know that that is the family dog. It could just be a wandering dog. Mm hmm and they do keep the family very generic because we know there were three children, a dog, and three grown-ups. We know two of the grown-ups were the mother and father. The third grown-up you kind of have to infer is the realtor, but they never say. We do know one of the children is a girl, but that's all we know. Oh, and I just noticed there's a bird standing on top of the signpost where, house for sale. Mm-hmm. At least that's probably what it says. Yeah, it's the sign's kind of tilted so much that it's hard to read the text. Huh. So, I see there's a poem on this page. Mm-hmm. With a very adorable illustration. Oh my god, it's cute. I'll describe it later. Jack in the Box. Little Pussy found a box, which had two tiny locks. Oh, marvelous, she cried. How I'd love to look inside. So she opened up the back, and up sprang Jumping Jack. Oh dear, cried Pussycat, you nearly knocked me flat. <laughs> Cute. And I don't really need to describe the poem art too much because it's the only thing I usually have to put up at this particular moment. So you already know that it's a jack-in-the-box and a cute little kitty who like almost has a paw up to their chin thinking, oh, but it's more of a surprise, like, whoa. Yes, well, it's after the box is open because... She says, oh dear, you nearly knocked me flat. So she was very startled. Yeah, and it's so cute watching little kittens go, whoa, fall backwards. <laughs> it's adorable. We're horrible, horrible people. It's called the currency of the internet, unless you're talking about Bitcoin. Or other cryptocurrencies. Fascinating. Yes, but I think cute cat videos were the original internet currency. Yep. Which is why they're worth so little now. The market's kind of been flooded. Yeah, inflation. All right, so this was Katie Fieldmouse's Birthday Party by Rosemary Garland and The Lonely House by Rosemary Bromley. Two more stories from My Bedtime Book of Two Minute Stories, edited by Rosemary Garland and illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Thank you for listening. Yes, there is still more book after this, but I do have other books and we read a lot of them already. You can see these playlists of them. Also, if you're not feeling bookish right now, there's all this pop culture stuff on the main section of the channel with pretty drawing pictures. You know, moving a little more visually engaging, you know, as opposed to a still image. Yeah, because I draw pretty pictures. They're very pretty, I think. I'm the one who draws them, so I'm kind of biased. Though usually artists go, oh my god, what did I just draw? Why? Yes, but over here in Ember's reading room, we get to appreciate the art of people who managed to make it far enough to be children's book illustrators, mm -hmm. which is pretty awesome. And they've all been very nice so far. Even the ones I seem to give more critical eyes to still are excellent artists. And if you haven't picked this book up yet, first, why haven't you picked this book up yet? Uh, link for it for Amazon, Ebates link for general shopping, and I could go into 16 or 17 more things, make this really complicated. Yes, Sasami-chan, I'm very tempted. And I'm sorry if I took away your comments again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
but let's settle for Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. I mean, we're so small we don't even get YouTube advertising revenue anymore, so come on, there's no way those bigger companies are looking at us. Thank you again for listening.